So today we'll be working on a little bicycle in watercolor and ink. So I already have my pencil drawing transferred onto my watercolor paper of a bike with some flowers in it. So when you're drawing your bicycle, um, a lot of times when I have references, I like to have a couple different references just because, you know, sometimes things aren't perfectly how we want them in our first reference. So maybe I didn't like this seat of the bicycle or, you know, I'm not a really big fan of sunflowers, then I could always combine and maybe put these flowers in here, maybe put some bushes like the ones in this picture in there. So those are kind of the options you have and it's always a good idea to have multiple references. So this one I did add a little more detail with the bicycle seat just to have a little more interest. So first what we're gonna do now that we have our bike is I'm going to go ahead and start working on some of the outlining. So I'm just using kind of an 01 pen. This one's just a generic pen, but it's about the same size as like an 01 or an 02. So I'm going to start off by just kind of outlining my entire bike. You know, and for this part, since the bike is, you know, metal and it's fairly smooth, you really want to make sure your line is smooth and kind of translates as smooth and you're kind of following where your line goes. And I have my other handle over here. And then for like my flowers, you know, I can make them a little more varied since, you know, they kind of have just little petals. So I could outline each of the individual petals and kind of simplify them because sunflowers have like a lot of petals. So you could always simplify them a little bit and try not to have every single petal in there, um, but still having it kind of resemble a sunflower. And then for the center of my flower, you know, to kind of have that sunflower texture, I might use stippling, which is those really small dots kind of add some texture in the middle. And then what's kind of funny is like the center of the sunflower is really dark. And then the outer ring is a little bit lighter. So that's where I could use a lot of stippling for the middle and then a little bit less on the outer edge. And then I'm kind of drawing some little lines for inside the petals like that. And I could also do maybe some little hatching in between some of my flowers. And then on my bike, I'm not going to do a lot of shading. You know, once I have it outlined, I could just do maybe on here, you know, it's really high contrast where it's like dark and light right next to each other. So to kind of show that, I could do that with paint or sometimes I'll just do a really light little bit of hatching on there just so it's not you know boring and just filled in because um, we'll still go over that with the color of our bike and then I could also do some hatching you know on the shadows that are underneath my little bike and I'm just gonna draw a little line for like our little pretend fence that's behind the bike I mean you don't necessarily have to do that you could always just have it just be a bike and have a little shadow underneath it and then shadows are always kind of the, you know, almost like a smushed version of our object. So this is like the handle, I mean, not the handle, the push pedal. <laughs> and then, you know, I might have like a little bit underneath the wheel. But some of that you could always wait and do with watercolor if you feel it's too dark and too jarring with the pen. And then I could use a ruler to make the rest of my fence line underneath, or I could just kind of estimate it. So, and then I'm just going to continue working on inking the rest of my bike. So, and also with your inking, one thing to watch out for is on the wheels, 
you know, we have a lot of lines going on. So it's good to use, you know, your thinner marker for the little lines on the wheel, you know, they're really thin. And then coming back into making the main lines that are, you know, part of the body of the bicycle, kind of making those a little bit thicker, you know, just by sometimes taking a bigger pen and going over some of those spots or even just kind of underlining the bottom, you know, makes that area look a little darker, but also, you know, helps to distinguish, you know, that thinner part from that thicker part. So this is just a number eight. I'm just coming back in and kind of emphasizing those little spots. So once your bike is all nice and inked, so I could probably spend more time inking this and doing some little details, but I'm gonna save that and you know add, I can always add more ink afterwards once I'm done with the watercolor. So with my watercolor, I'm gonna start by blocking in some yellow on my bike and a really light turquoise. So to make a turquoise, I mean, you can buy a turquoise in the tube, but if you don't wanna do that, you can also make a turquoise by using Viridian Green with a lot, a lot of water. Um, but this turquoise actually looks like it might have a little bit of blue with it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my Viridian Green, which is this one. See, and by itself, it's pretty turquoisey. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of Cerulean Blue. See, and now it's kind of a nice bluey turquoise. So, and I'm gonna first start, like I said, with the cadmium yellow. And I'm just gonna come in and do a light wash on all of my kind of brighter areas. So like um, all over my flowers. And of course, also the leaves, because the leaves are green, so yellow won't hurt it. It'll actually add a little depth to it. And then I'm gonna come in with that turquoise color, which is always good sometimes to make, if you have a really specific color, try and make a lot of that color. And I'm just really lightly going over anything that's turquoise. Of course, you can always change the color of your bike doesn't have to stay this color. And it goes all the way up to the handles. That actually stays white. And some of the areas actually on the spike suddenly turn yellow. So, you know, if it won't hurt it, sometimes you can just switch colors while you're painting a really light layer. You just have to be careful, like um, if the colors were complements, like yellow and purple, it might make a brown in the middle, which you might not want. So that's always something to try and look out for. And most of this, I'm just gonna go over with turquoise, except for areas that are kind of white, just cause a little turquoise makes it interesting. See, I got all that. Oh, and then my seat is like a brown, so I might use like burnt sienna to fill that. Of course, you could always change the color of the seat, just make it a little black seat. And I'm gonna take that cadmium yellow and start putting some on the little outlining that's on my wheels. Just have to be careful you know, if there are any other colors near this right now and I just went ahead and started outlining, it's gonna bleed. So always be careful of that. And then on my little basket, you can make it a clear basket or you could make it a brown basket. So my yellow is not too wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make mine a brown basket. So I'm gonna use some of that burnt sienna just cause with watercolor and you know, any medium you wanna have like related colors in your painting, not just have tons of random colors, because then it kind of helps to connect the painting. So, and I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray, 
and add a little brown to it to make it like a neutral gray. And if you look on here, you know, we have white areas, but some of them aren't bright white, like the tips of the handles are bright white, but some of this is kind of gray. So that's why I wanna pay attention to that and kind of mix a nice light gray to use. And it's mainly on kind of the shadow areas. And could just use a little here too. And I'll probably make that darker in a little bit. And then I also forgot to make this turquoise. Whoops. And this back here is a little bit of a darker turquoise because it's kind of farther away. So we'll have to do a couple coats on that. So now to add a little more depth to our flowers, I'm gonna come back in on those and take some cadmium yellow and add a little bit of orange to them to make kind of a darker yellow. Um, you could always just keep going with maybe just regular cadmium yellow at first. You don't have to jump to the orange yellow yet. And what I wanna do is just kind of start blocking in some of the shadows I see in my picture. So they're kind of hard to see since you know our flowers are so small. So I'm mainly just trying to darken that yellow right next to the center and then on one side of each of my little petals. And then on some of these, like this one is far away, so it's all gonna be dark. And this one's gonna be also pretty dark because they're far away. And I'm going to take some sap green because I like a little bleeding sometimes in some areas. Makes our paintings a little more interesting. So I'm going to block in a little bit of sap green on here while it's still wet. And then Gonna make a nice dark brown with some burnt sienna and blue. And gonna go over the centers of these flowers. Just watch out, you know, if yours are really wet, I would recommend not jumping to that just yet. And since this is really wet and I can't touch it very much, I'm gonna go ahead and do a darker turquoise, which can just be our turquoise with a little bit less water or maybe a little more blue. And I'm gonna use that color to start looking for my shadows. So for my shadows, I can leave them really high contrast where that means you know I'm not really blending them very much like that. But what I'll probably do is probably just blend the edges just a little bit. Let's see, it's a little dark down here and down here. Of course, in all the places that are like behind this bike, I'm gonna have to darken a little bit, but let's blend this while they're still wet. And then this part right here is a little brown. So we're gonna put that same brown right there. And also I'm gonna do a little shadow at the bottom of that seat. You know, and I could probably also do a little shadow on the bottom of these handlebars with some gray. And I'm gonna take that dark turquoise and we're gonna darken these little bars back here, because they're behind everything. There's also one over here, which I hadn't gotten to. Oh, and there's also one right here, which I kind of made that up. I might have to outline it later. 
And then I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray, because you know I love Payne's Gray. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of brown. That's gonna make a nice dark gray that I'm gonna block in on my tires. And doing these things in layers just adds a bit of depth because if I just went straight in with that dark and didn't add any highlights or anything, it just makes it feel very flat. Now I'm too worried about areas where it bled. That's okay. If I really was upset by it, I could always try and lift it with a wet brush. And I'm also going to take that dark gray and I'm going to darken some of these little pieces that are back behind our little bike. Whoops. And actually this piece goes all the way back here. And then next what we're gonna do, let's see, still looking for any of those little dark shadows. Maybe I'll darken this just a tad. And I could pop in some yellow, maybe on here, on the top of the seat, just makes it look a little bit brighter. And then my gray, while it's drying, I'm gonna come in and add a little shadow under my bike. So I could use gray, you know, if I didn't really want anything down here. Um, or, you know, if I wanted this to be like a little dirt road, I might wanna come in with like burnt sienna and yellow and paint this whole thing. That reddish color for the floor. And then come in with some of that gray and mix it a little bit with that burnt sienna so that it still feels kind of warm. And then while it's wet, I could try and kind of put in that shadow. So and then that leaves a little bit of texture and a little bit of interest. And then, you know, if it seems like it's fading, not really showing up a lot, I could always come back in and dump some more dark in there, but that's okay. And then now I'm gonna try and make a really, really dark gray for those wheels. Which, just using Payne's gray, or I mean, you could go straight black if you have any black. Sometimes even black needs to go a little darker, so sometimes I'll come in I'm gonna add a little brown to it. So this is my really dark black mixture because I added brown to it. I'm putting a little bit right there because that's casting a shadow and then also the bottom of the tires. There's a little bit of a shadow. And then I'm just gonna take a little water, and just touch the edges so it just kind of fades. You know, I'm not trying to drag it because that's gonna change the whole wheel color. So I'm just kind of plopping a little water in between like the light gray and the dark gray. And I'm gonna do the same thing on my other tire. So it's really dark under here. I'm just redoing a little bit of my shadows, just make them a little darker, a little more contrast. But you don't wanna go get out of hand with those shadows because we love doing those shadows so much, sometimes we'll lose the little light we had. Just glazing over it with some yellow to make things pop a little bit more. And then, sorry for my nose, 
Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to darken the center of my flowers a little bit and probably add some darker green. So I'm just coming in with the center of my flowers, just darkening those a bit. Really so they have a lot more contrast and pop. And then I'm going to take some Viridian green, which is a nice bluey green. And I'm going to add a little Payne's gray to that. Make it really dark. And if it's, you know, too bluey and you don't like it, you could always add like a little bit of yellow to it. I like a little variety in my greens because sometimes it looks really flat if you just use one kind of green. And I could even pop in with some yellow and just drop it in there on my leaves. And salting is a really great technique to use if you have any greenery, you know, because sometimes, you know, it all kind of flattens and turns into one color. So I might sprinkle a little bit of salt in those areas and a little more yellow on sunflowers never hurts because you know they're sunny and we want them to look sunny just be careful of that green because it might soak into the thing and then background wise um you know you could leave it white have it really high contrast you know that's always kind of pretty or I could come in and do a sky. I could do a little picket fence back there. I do need to darken my little basket a little bit. And I could even make it a little dark back here. And a little dark right underneath these little flowers. There you go. So I think for my background, I'm going to use some blue because I love blue. But I'm not going to go really dark just because our bike is pretty dark with all those turquoise. So I'm just dropping in some of this and you could always wet the paper first. I don't mind a little hard edges, so I'm just dropping in some of this. And now I'm gonna take some water. You know, and sometimes it's interesting just to leave it like that. Because some artists like Winslow Homer, um, when he would do clouds, he would leave a lot of hard edges. And sometimes that's not a bad thing because it just, you know, adds a lot more contrast, draws your eye to it. And I think a little blue back here will make those handlebars pop. So, and I'm going to take some yellow, do a little splat, and just to again, you know, connect everything, I'm going to take a little yellow and also put it in my shadow, and maybe even a little Payne's Gray. Right underneath the tire. There you go, little bike painting.